Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava. And in the honor of Disability Pride Month, I thought I'd talk about 20 romance books that are on my TBR that have disability representation in them. We're a few weeks into Disability Pride Month. And if you would like to pick up any of these books, go right on ahead. I might be picking up some of them. Definitely not all of them. There are too many. <laughs> Um, but these are definitely books at the top of my TBR that have disability representation in them that I'll be reading all year long, not just in July, which is Disability Pride Month. So without further ado, here are 20 romances that I would love to read that have disability rep. First are actually two that I am about to start because the authors very kindly sent me ALCs, which is advanced listener copies. So audiobook arcs. First is The Ones That Write Themselves by Sydney Bolin. It looks like our heroine Laurel goes on a trip to Ireland and she meets a man there who completely kind of like wrecks her life plan that she had because she ends up falling for a man who lives 5,157 miles away. <laughs> so she's trying to figure out what to do because she's falling in love with this man but he lives very far away from her home. That's all I really know about this one. I'm excited because I love Ireland. It has chronic illness representation of some sort in it. Same with The Irish Fall, so another Ireland set romance. So um, I got an ALC of this one as well. This one is by Brooke Gilbert. Excuse the um, claw sounds if you hear them. Hickory's running around the room. It's zoomy time apparently. This one is by Air and Darby. Air um, is going through a lot of chronic pain at the moment, I believe she has a few chronic illness conditions, if I'm not mistaken. And um, she ends up meeting Darby, who is a tour guide in Ireland. And I believe that they just fall in love with each other. That's all I really know. Its own voices for um, aciovagal Crohn's, ovarian cysts, suspected endometriosis, arthritic pain, and mental health. PTSD and infertility are also represented in this one. And you can get both of these audiobooks, I believe off of Spotify, which is cool. These are the two like first books ever that I'm listening to on Spotify. Next I have Quiver by Juliana Victoria. This is a forbidden brother's teammate hockey romance. I believe our heroine is a PA, a physician's assistant. The representation here is multiple sclerosis. Alessandro, our hero, and her new neighbor, who's also on her brother's hockey team, has MS. And then I believe our heroine has vitiligo. She is his new doctor, which will be very forbidden for sure. But this looks so good. Like it looks really good. And look at the little puppy on the cover too. Next is One by Julie Ann. I think this book has been on a few TBRs for me. I've been on a like ebook reading slump. So if it's not on audio, I have a very hard time reading them. So like this video is my push to get back into ebooks okay one by julie ann i believe our heroine falls for our hero who is a college football player and she has a prosthetic leg she's an amputee this one has been on my tbr for quite a while and i've never read a julie ann book so i definitely want to pick this one up caught in the axe by daphne elliott has been on my tbr for a while as well because i believe there is celiac disease representation this is our heroine's romance with her ex's brother who is 10 years older than her and I believe she becomes the grumpy lumberjack's temporary assistant. I don't know who has celiac disease, if it's the hero or the heroine, um, I don't really remember, but it's a small town romance. So I'm wondering how are they gonna figure out celiac in a small town? Because I live in a small town and it's absolutely awful <laughs> shopping for anything for me to eat. So I'll be, I'll be on the lookout here, okay? I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be watching that. <laughs> Next is The Aloha Butterfly Kiss by Brooke Gilbert. This one has lupus, migraines, and chronic pain representation. I feel like this is giving great summer vibes also. I love this tagline. It says, he's a surfer. She's allergic to the sun. The one thing they have in common is their service dogs who have fallen in love. <laughs> I don't have to read anything else. That looks awesome. <laughs> Next I have Finding His Forever by Ellen Brooks. This one has representation for limb difference. Look who is joining us. <laughs> He's been making a lot of noise and ruckus and I'm probably gonna have to edit out of this video, right? Hmm? You're being naughty. Oh my goodness, you wanna go up? Up on the windowsill, there you go. Move your butt, move your butt. 
It looks like our heroine is a teacher and she says that having one hand doesn't mean, mean I'm incapable. I've spent my whole life proving I can take care of myself and it's worked out just fine except in the bedroom. So basically she wants to lose her V card and um, she's gonna ask our hero to do that essentially. And she's like, I don't really want feelings involved. Um, I just want this done. Um, but then all bets are off when he ends up like actually falling for her. So um, yeah, I haven't read a lot of limb difference romances. So here's another one with that representation. Next is Point of Pride by Chloe Angle. I believe both of our characters in here are ballet dancers. It's been on my TBR for quite a while and I really need to pick it up. It came out earlier this year. This cover really drew me in. I'm pretty sure this one has chronic pelvic pain, which is not a representation I have read about yet. Next is Fighting Quiet by Dina Hoff. I believe this is a dark romance with speechless representation. It looks like her heroine Claire um, lost her voice and her innocence when she was a child. They were brutally stolen from her. And I think she's been kidnapped or something along those lines. Oh no, she's in foster care and has been kicked out of her foster home only to fall into the ruthless grip of a local gang. And our hero is Brooks, who is an underground fighter. Then an injured, terrified woman breaks into his gym and stirs up the beasts from his childhood. And they might have a little bit of a past also. Sorry, my cat is trying to get in my lap. Yeah, this one sounds good. It isn't on Kindle Unlimited though, but it is pretty cheap. It's only $2.99 and it is a dark romance. So if you're in the dark romance, it has pretty good ratings, honestly, like really good ratings over 4.5 on Goodreads and 4.9 on Amazon. Like those are really good ratings. So hi. <laughs> the next one that I have is Take Me Down by Avery Kingston, which is a book I do have physically, but I'm currently in the process of moving so that is packed up already but yeah that one i got at a signing she was at and she pitched it to me and i was like oh my gosh yeah yes it looks like our hero is a radio show host and he's blind and i believe the audiobook just came out for this like literally like two days ago. So I need to go check that out also. But it sounds like right up my alley. I've never read anything with like a radio show host before, but I love how it has disability representation. So I can't wait to pick it up. Next is Downpour by Maggie Gates. I saw Tori read this one. Um, she recently recommended it on her Instagram and I was like, oh my gosh, let me see what that is. It's a grumpy sunshine romance. Looks like we have a character who is a wheelchair user in this book. It says, get ready for a sizzling summer romance full of action accidental livestock house pets, a walking disaster of a heroine, and the grumpiest hero ever. Sign me up. Y'all should see this cat on my lap. He is like, he's never sat on my lap like this. Hi. Hi. What's up? <laughs> Next is a prickly romance, a single dad billionaire romance. This is an enemies to lovers romance. Our hero is a single dad. He has a few kids. I believe our heroine is deaf as well as one of his kids, but I don't really know how they go together. I don't think it's a nanny romance. I'm not sure, um, but it looks like our hero is the very big alpha hole. <laughs> oh, it is an office romance. So I guess they work together possibly. And it's also slow burn. It looks really cute. Next is Hidden in Darkness by Alice Winters. Sorry, I keep looking my head like this the whole time, y'all. The cat is in the place where my computer normally is sitting. So I, so blame, blame him. <laughs> this one has a character who is blind. This one kind of reminds me of Rush by Emma Scott a little bit. This is an MM romance and it looks like Felix, one of the heroes is hired to take care of Lane, who is our recently blinded man, who is depressed, rude, and difficult to be around. And these two fall in love. So yeah, it says it's a 90k word book full of snark, car chases, and morally questionable choices. <laughs> Next is Seeing Red by Bailey Hanna. This one has Hashimoto's disease and PCOS. I have never read a book with Hashimoto's, but I know a few people who have Hashimoto's, so definitely interested in this one. So it looks like heroine Cassidy wants to get back at her ex. So she hooks up with a local cowboy named Chase. Uh, but then she finds out that she's pregnant and the two of them have to co-parent and I guess they fall in love. Kind of reminds me of Out on a Limb. So I'm even more excited to read this one. Okay, the cat has moved because I threw him off because he was, he decided to bite me <laughs> because I was petting him. Goodness gracious, this cat is gonna be the death of me. <laughs> Next I have Ashes, which is a dark asylum bully romance. It's the third book in the Boys of Chapel Crest series, which I've never heard about. But anytime I see like a dark romance that has disability rep, I put it on my TBR because I feel like it's really rare to have. This one has speechless representation. I don't really know what this is about, except that 
This is a dark romance that is also a bully romance. I don't really know. Maybe this is a why choose book, honestly. I have no idea. I can't figure it out. The summary is very vague. Next is A Duke Worth Fighting For by Christina Britton. This one has chronic pain representation, but it is the third book in the Isle of Sin series. So sometimes with historicals though, I don't need to read them in order. I feel like I'm fine. So Daniel Hale, who is the Duke of Carlisle, returned from Waterloo a hero, and he has the wounds to prove it. And he doesn't really go on to go back to society because that means he's gonna have to go to balls and stuff and socialize and find a wife. And he is very socially awkward, socially anxious. So he needs someone to help him learn how to socialize better. Enter Marjorie Kitteridge, who is still mourning the loss of her husband. So she receives a blackmail letter accusing him of desertion. She's desperate to protect his reputation. The answer to her troubles appears in the form of a damaged, reclusive, and much too desirable, desirable duke in need of a wife. So she proposes an alliance. She'll help him find a bride in return for the money to pay back the blackmailer and the two of them obviously fall for each other. And I believe the hero is the one with the chronic pain after he experienced what he did at Waterloo. Next is Dateless by L.A. Casey. This cover is just like stunning. I love it. This one has deaf representation. It looks like Dante is very much the ladies man. He says it right here, like he gets around with women. He's never thought about settling down until a country girl falls into his lap and has him questioning everything. Her name is Ina O'Shea and she has been sheltered her whole life by everyone from her abusive father and her territorial ex-boyfriend. For the first time, she was living life by her rules and refused to allow her disability to spoil that. She always wanted more from life and moving across the hall from Dante Collins might just be an adventure she's always sought. So it looks like they're neighbors. Ooh. Next is A Smile in a Whisper by Jacqueline Middleton. This one has Crohn's representation, which I rarely see in romances. So I'm excited to read this. It looks like this is a second chance romance between Evie and Nikolai. So Evie lives in this very small town and she has convinced herself that guys won't date the sick girl and the blame falls on the shoulders of her first love, a famous boy from London who spent his summers on her island. The outside world, Nikolai lives a charmed life. Starring in a popular British TV series as a teen, young Nick stole fans' heart from the Isle of Wait to Shetland. <laughs> However, that was a long time ago and the years since have been filled with didn't you used to be moments, career wrong turns, and empty relationships. Now finding success behind the cameras, Nick is still racked with regret and guilt over how he ended things with a girl he loved and left behind. But then he's going to be filming a TV series in her small town and they have to come back in contact. Next is A Summer Ball's Love, which is a historical romance. This cover caught my eye, um, but I don't know the exact representation in here, but it's disability rep of some sort. It says that her heroine Mariah um, received a mysterious illness that has plagued her life. She hesitantly attends a ball where she meets the most charming Earl she could ever dream of. However, her stepmother is not happy with Mariah's unexpected acquaintance as she has always envied and viewed her as her own daughter's competitor. To make matters worse, Mariah's illness gets in the way of spending time with her charming admirer and threatens to bring her blossoming dreams crashing down. So maybe this is kind of Cinderella a Cinderella retelling because I see like kind of like wicked stepmother vibes. The last book that I have on this list is The Six Step Plan by Candace Hemingway. I believe this one has an autoimmune disease, which I have an autoimmune disease, so can't wait to read this one. Ooh, it looks like this is a friends to lovers because it says Evan is Violet's best friend and decade-long crush, but she's kept it well under control mostly. At least that's what she tells herself when her feelings threaten to overwhelm her. Diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, she's determined to suffer both her illness and her attraction in silence, but lately it's gotten harder to keep those feelings at bay, and she's beginning to worry she may be careening towards disaster. Violet is Evan's best friend and there's definitely nothing romantic between them until a green dress, a rogue insect, and an annoyingly muscled English teacher throws his world into a tailspin. Now he needs to plan to woo his best friend without destroying their entire relationship in the process. So friends to lovers, autoimmune disease rep, I'm excited. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 20 romances with disability representation that are on my TBR. Let me know down below if you have any more recommendations for me. I would love to know, especially if they're on audio, because again, I'm having this horrible ebook slump right now. <laughs> So if you don't feel like commenting anything else, you can leave me a purple heart emoji down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.